We're getting into the stories of the very first Christian kings in their lands. These courageous leaders didn't just rule their kingdoms. They transformed the spiritual landscape of their nations forever. Join us as we unravel the tales of ten remarkable monarchs who embraced Christianity when it was still a budding faith, shaping the destiny of their realms and leaving an enduring legacy. From distant lands to ancient empires, let's explore the incredible accounts of the pioneering rulers who became the first Christian beacons in their countries. Discover the kings who walked the path of faith, their struggles, triumphs, and the lasting impact they left on the world around them. Join us as we uncover their incredible stories of courage, conviction, and the profound influence they wielded as the inaugural Christian rulers of their realms. Subscribe and journey with us through history to explore the remarkable tales of those who led their nations into the embrace of Christianity for the very first time. Don't miss out on these incredible stories. 10. Afonso I, also known as Afonso Henriquez, was the first king of Portugal and played a crucial role in the establishment of the Portuguese nation. His reign marked a significant period in the history of Portugal and its transition from a county to an independent kingdom. Afonso was born in 1109 as the son of Henry of Burgundy, Count of Portugal, and Teresa of Len, Countess of Portugal. His mother, Teresa, ruled the county of Portugal on behalf of her husband and then after his death. However, she faced opposition and conflicts within the region. Afonso Henriquez began his rise to power in his late teens, rebelling against his mother's authority. His ambition was to establish an independent Portuguese state. By 1128, Afonso defeated his mother's forces at the Battle of Somamid, securing his authority over the county of Portugal. After consolidating his rule, Afonso continued to expand his territory battling against both Muslim and Christian forces in the Iberian Peninsula. During this time, he maintained a close relationship with the Church and sought support from the Catholic Church to legitimize his rule. The exact details of Afonso I's conversion to Christianity are not extensively documented, but it's widely acknowledged that his reign was marked by a close alliance with the Church. He sought the church's support in his efforts to consolidate power and expand his territories. Afonso's relationship with the church was strategic. By aligning himself with the church and embracing Christianity, he gained legitimacy for his rule, support from the clergy, and strengthened ties with other Christian kingdoms in Europe. This move was essential for the stability and recognition of the newly emerging Kingdom of Portugal. Overall, while specific details about Afonso's personal religious convictions and the exact circumstances of his conversion might not be well documented, his alliance with the Church and adoption of Christianity played a crucial role in the formation and recognition of the Kingdom of Portugal. 9. Stephen I was the first king of Hungary and played a pivotal role in the Christianization of the Hungarian people. He ruled from around 1000 to 1038 AD. His conversion to Christianity and subsequent efforts to spread the faith in Hungary were significant events in the country's history. Stephen's father, Grand Prince Gza, had been open to Christianity but hadn't fully embraced it. However, Stephen's conversion to Christianity was a crucial turning point. He married Gisela, a Bavarian princess, who was a devout Christian and influenced Stephen in embracing the faith. After ascending to the throne, Stephen actively promoted Christianity as the state religion. He sought assistance from Rome and Pope Sylvester II to establish an ecclesiastical organization. In Hungary, Pope Sylvester II sent a royal crown to Stephen, thereby confirming him as a Christian king. Stephen implemented a series of reforms that helped consolidate Christianity in Hungary. He invited foreign priests and monks to assist in evangelization and established bishoprics and monasteries throughout the country. He also worked to codify laws and create a stable political structure for the kingdom, which was significantly influenced by Christian principles. Stephen's efforts to Christianize Hungary were thorough and enduring. He built churches, supported missionary work, 
and set up a system that intertwined Christianity with the governance of the land. His legacy as a Christian king and the first ruler of Hungary left an indelible mark on the nation's history and its religious identity. Saint Stephen is regarded as a national hero and the patron saint of Hungary. His feast day, celebrated on August 20th, is a national holiday in Hungary, known as Saint Stephen's Day. 8. Grand Prince Vladimir the Great, also known as Vladimir the Great, was a ruler of Kievan Rus in the 10th and early 11th centuries. His conversion to Christianity is a pivotal moment in the history of the Eastern Slavs and the spread of Christianity in the region. Before his conversion, Vladimir practiced traditional pagan beliefs, and the Rus people followed a polytheistic religion centered around multiple gods and rituals. However, Vladimir's reign was marked by significant changes and expansion of his empire. The story of Vladimir's conversion to Christianity is often linked to his search for a unifying faith for his people. He reportedly sent emissaries to observe various religions, including Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, to find the most suitable one for his realm. The envoys returned with favorable reports about Christianity particularly its ceremonies and splendor after visiting Constantinople Byzantine Empire. Impressed by the grandeur of the Orthodox Christian worship in Constantinople, Vladimir sought to adopt Christianity for his kingdom. In 988 AD, Vladimir made the decision to embrace Christianity and was baptized. Along with many of his followers in the Dnieper River, the Byzantine Emperor Basil II's sister, Anna, married Vladimir, and this marriage alliance further solidified the ties between Kievan Rus and the Byzantine Empire. The adoption of Christianity by Vladimir had significant implications. He ordered the destruction of pagan statues and temples and initiated the construction of churches throughout his realm. His conversion led to the Christianization of Kievan Rus and the subsequent spread of Orthodox Christianity among the Eastern Slavs. The Christianization under Vladimir's rule not only affected religious practices but also influenced the culture, art, and governance of the region. Churches and monasteries were built and Christian traditions began to replace pagan rituals. Vladimir's embrace of Christianity had a lasting impact, shaping the religious and cultural landscape of the Eastern Slavs and laying the foundation for the Orthodox Christian tradition in the region for centuries to come. 7. Hakon the Good was a significant figure in Norwegian history during the 10th century. His reign, which lasted from approximately 934 to 961, was marked by his efforts to establish Christianity in Norway. Hakon was raised in the court of King Athelstan of England after his father, King Harald Fairhair sent him there following political upheavals in Norway. During his time in England, Hakon was exposed to Christianity and received a Christian upbringing. When Hakon returned to Norway to claim the throne, he encountered opposition from pagan factions within the country. Despite this, he sought to introduce Christianity to Norway, inspired by his experiences in England and his personal beliefs. Hakon didn't force Christianity upon his people, but rather aimed to promote it through peaceful means. He allowed Christian missionaries to operate in the country, established churches, and supported the building of Christian institutions. He also encouraged trade and cultural ties with Christian communities abroad, furthering the influence of Christianity in Norway. His approach was one of tolerance and diplomacy, aiming to gradually integrate Christianity into Norwegian society while respecting traditional pagan beliefs. This strategy helped pave the way for the eventual Christianization of Norway. Hakon the Good's efforts laid the groundwork for the later conversion of Norway to Christianity. Although his reign was relatively short, his policies and approach towards introducing Christianity were instrumental in the country's transition from paganism to Christianity. He is remembered as a king who sought to unify Norway and promote peaceful coexistence between different religious beliefs. 
6. King Ethelbert of Kent, who reigned from around 560 to 616 AD, is renowned for his conversion to Christianity and his role in the early Christianization of Anglo-Saxon England. He was the King of Kent, one of the seven kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy. One of the pivotal moments in Ethelbert's reign was his marriage to Bertha, a Frankish princess who was a Christian. Bertha brought her chaplain, Bishop Liud Hard, with her to Kent, and Ethelbert granted her the freedom to practice her Christian faith. The story goes that Ethelbert, through his interactions with Bertha and exposure to Christianity, became increasingly interested in the Christian faith. Eventually, under the influence of his wife and with the arrival of Augustine of Canterbury sent by Pope Gregory the Great, Ethelbert converted to Christianity. In 597 AD, Augustine arrived in Kent on a mission to convert the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. Ethelbert initially met Augustine and his companions in an open-air meeting, as he feared the Christian missionaries might use magic against him. However, he allowed them to preach and granted them a place to settle, which became the site of Canterbury Cathedral. Ethelbert's conversion is significant as it is regarded as the starting point of the Christianization of Anglo-Saxon England. His conversion paved the way for the establishment of the Canterbury Mission and the subsequent spread of Christianity throughout the region. He also enacted laws that were influenced by Christian principles, which contributed to the integration of Christianity into the societal and legal frameworks of Kent and neighboring Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. King Ethelbert's support and conversion played a crucial role in the early stages of Christianity's establishment in England. 5. King Record I, also known as Record the Visigoth, was a significant ruler in the Visigothic Kingdom which was a part of the Iberian Peninsula during the 6th and early 7th centuries. His conversion to Christianity marked a pivotal moment in the history of the Visigoths. Record I succeeded his father, King Leo Vigild, around 586 AD during his father's reign. The Visigothic Kingdom was primarily Arian Christian, following a Christian sect considered heretical by the Roman Catholic Church. This division caused unrest and tension among the population. However, upon ascending to the throne, Record I sought to unify his kingdom and bring stability. To achieve this, he converted from Arianism to Catholicism, aligning himself and his kingdom with the Nicene Creed and the Roman Catholic Church. In 589 AD, during the Third Council of Toledo, Record declared his conversion to Catholicism and renounced Arianism. This decision was crucial, as it initiated the conversion of the Visigothic people to Catholic Christianity. His conversion also helped to bring about religious unity within his kingdom, which was essential for political stability and maintaining peaceful relations with the Catholic, Church and other Christian kingdoms in Europe. Record I's conversion had profound effects on the religious landscape of the Iberian Peninsula, leading to the gradual Christianization of the Visigothic Kingdom, and the eventual consolidation of Catholicism as the dominant religion in the region. His decision significantly influenced the religious and political trajectory of the Visigoths, and contributed to the overall history of Christianity in Spain. 4. Clovis I also known as Clodovic, was the first king of the Franks to unite all the Frankish tribes under one ruler, establishing what would become the Merovingian dynasty. He ruled from around 481 to 511 AD. One of the most significant events in Clovis's life was his conversion to Christianity. According to historical accounts, Clovis was initially a pagan who worshipped the gods of the Germanic pantheon, however, during his reign, he married a Burgundian princess named Clotilde, who was a devout Christian. She urged him to convert to Christianity and to abandon his pagan beliefs. The moment often cited as the turning point in Clovis's conversion is the Battle of Tolbiac for 980 against the Alemanni, a Germanic tribe. As the battle seemed to turn against the Franks, Clovis reportedly prayed to Clotilde's god for victory. The tide of the battle turned in his favor, leading Clovis to attribute his success to the Christian god. 
He converted to Christianity shortly after the battle, along with many of his warriors. Clavis's conversion to Christianity was a significant event in European history. It not only marked a personal religious transformation for Clovis, but also had political implications. By aligning himself with the Christian Church, Clovis gained the support of the Christian clergy and solidified his authority over the Frankish territories. Additionally, his conversion played a crucial role in the Christianization of the Frankish kingdom, setting the stage for the spread of Christianity among the Franks and their subsequent influence on European Christianity. 3. King Constantine the Great was a Roman emperor who ruled from 306 to 337 AD. He is renowned for several significant contributions to Christianity, particularly in the early days of its acceptance within the Roman Empire. The story of Constantine's conversion to Christianity is often associated with the Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312 AD. According to tradition, on the eve of this battle against his rival Maxentius, Constantine claimed to have had a vision of the Chi, Rho, a Christian symbol, along with the words and the sign, you shall conquer or similar variations. This led him to adopt the symbol on the shields of his soldiers. Constantine then won the battle decisively, leading many to believe that this vision was a sign from the Christian God. After his victory at Milvian Bridge, Constantine issued the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, alongside his co-emperor Licinius, which proclaimed religious tolerance throughout the Roman Empire. This edict granted Christians the freedom to practice their faith openly, effectively ending the persecution they had faced for centuries. Constantine's patronage of Christianity continued throughout his reign, he convened the First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, which aimed to settle theological disputes within Christianity, particularly the Arian controversy regarding the nature of Christ. The council resulted in the formulation of the Nicene Creed, which established key Christian doctrines and affirmed Christ's divinity. While Constantine's conversion to Christianity was a pivotal moment, scholars debate the sincerity of his faith, some believe he embraced Christianity for political reasons, aiming to unite the empire under a single religion. However, regardless of his motivations, his support for Christianity marked a significant shift in Roman policy and greatly contributed to the religion's rise to prominence within the empire. 2. King Tiridates III was the king of Armenia from approximately 287 to 330 AD. His conversion to Christianity is a significant event in both Armenian history and Christian tradition. According to historical accounts and legends, Tiridates III was initially an opponent of Christianity. However, the story takes a dramatic turn when St. Gregory the Illuminator, a Christian missionary, was imprisoned in a pit for preaching Christianity. Gregory was released from his imprisonment at the behest of Tyrodate's sister, Kosroviduct. As a result, Gregory gained Tyrodate's favor and began to evangelize to the king. Despite initial resistance and a turbulent relationship, Gregory's influence gradually led to Tyrodate's eventual conversion to Christianity. This pivotal moment is often linked to a miraculous event where Tyrodate's was afflicted with a severe illness which Gregory miraculously cured, solidifying the king's faith in Christianity. Tyrodates' conversion to Christianity in the early 4th century marked a significant turning point. For Armenia, he not only embraced the religion himself, but also declared Christianity as the state religion of Armenia. This made Armenia the first nation to officially adopt Christianity as its state religion a decision that had a profound and lasting impact on the country's history and culture. The story of King Tyrodates' conversion to Christianity, his relationship with St. Gregory the Illuminator, and the subsequent adoption of Christianity in Armenia are often celebrated and revered in Armenian history and Christian tradition. The conversion of Tyrodates played a crucial role in the spread of Christianity in the region and contributed to its establishment as a dominant faith in Armenia. 1. King Izana, 
also known as Abreha, was a ruler of the kingdom of Aksum, located in present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea. He is recognized for his significant role in adopting Christianity as the state religion of Aksum during the early 4th century 320 AD. Azana's conversion to Christianity is a crucial event in the history of Ethiopia and the spread of Christianity in the region. The process of his conversion is not extensively documented, but historical accounts indicate that Azana embraced Christianity under the influence of Frumentius, who was an influential Christian figure. Frumentius, a Christian from Tyre modern-day Lebanon, was shipwrecked in the kingdom of Aksum along with his brother in the early 4th century. They were taken into the royal court and gained favor with the king. Frumentius became an advisor to Azana and exerted a considerable influence on the monarch. Under Frumentius' guidance, Azana eventually converted to Christianity. He then declared Christianity as the official religion of the kingdom of Aksum making it one of the earliest known instances of a state adopting Christianity as its official faith. This declaration had far-reaching implications for the region, leading to the spread of Christianity among the people of Aksum. Azana's conversion not only impacted the religious landscape of the kingdom, but also influenced its cultural and socio-political development. It marked the beginning of a long history of Christianity in the region, shaping Ethiopia's identity as one of the oldest Christian nations in the world. Azana's reign and his acceptance of Christianity are pivotal moments in Ethiopian history, laying the foundation for the growth and prominence of Christianity in the region. Thanks for watching our video about the first Christian kings in different countries, from King Azana of Aksum to King Constantine the Great and many more. These rulers played a big role in bringing Christianity to their nations. Their decisions changed history and shaped the way people worship today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating stories about influential figures throughout history. Stay tuned for our next video.